Hi, this is Henry Nassino, and I am going to talk about Apache Beam and Google Cloud Dataflow. So I am a customer engineer on the Google Cloud Platform team, and I'm just going to do a, a quick overview of how these two work together. So what are the, the these two things? Uh, the first, what is Apache Beam? So Apache Beam is an open source unified model for defining both batch and streaming data parallel processing pipelines. Kind of a mouthful. But basically, it is a it is the, the model that you create using one of the supported Beam SDKs for building a pipeline. And the pipeline can be either batch or streaming based pipelines. Once that pipeline is created, using one of the SDKs, you then take that pipeline and you can run it in any given, any number of backends. And you can also run it locally on your laptop. I'm, I'll actually run uh, my, my model on my Mac, and then I'll take that same model, do a little, very minor modifications, and I'll run it in Google Cloud Dataflow. So because this is an open source uh, project, Apache Beam, um, it allows us to be, fairly agnostic to where I want to run this pipeline. So I define it and then I run it. Two separate processes. So what is Cloud Data Flow? So it is that backend component. It's a it's what we call a runner. Um, so the runner supports both both unified batch and stream processing. Uh, so you take that beam model and whatever you define in that beam model, that's what we're gonna run on the data flow kind of backend processing service. It's fully managed. So from an operations perspective, there's no ops, there's no spinning up VMs, there's no installing operating systems, no installing SDKs, it's completely no ops. Um, as I mentioned before, it supports the, the open source Apache Beam programming model. So you define your model, use one of the SDKs in the Apache Beam SDK, and you run it on these backend uh, runners, in this case, Cloud Dataflow. And as we said, from a fully managed perspective, it intelligently scales to millions of queries per second. And in the ex example that I'm gonna go through, again, I, like I mentioned, I'm gonna run it locally with a very small data set. And then I'm gonna, or I have previously ran it on Cloud Dataflow on a larger data set, for, uh, I think approximately one gigabyte data set. And we'll see how it intelligently scales depending on the amount of processing, or in this case, the amount of data that it needs to process. So together, as kind of I've mentioned, Beam is the collection of SDKs for Beam for building these pipelines, and the runners, the, the specific runner that I'm going to show is Cloud Dataflow, and again, I'm going to show Dataflow, and I'm going to show just running on my my local Mac environment. So basically, what we call a direct or a local runner. So what does this programming model look like? So really I said slides as Cloud Dataflow, but this really is the Beam SDK programming or Beam SDK programming model. Um, just uh, another clarification. So uh, uh, Cloud Dataflow did have its own SDKs. And then when we open sourced and put this in the, in the Apache, um, we now support the Apache Beam um, models and SDKs. So regardless if it's Cloud Dataflow uh, SDK or the Apache Beam SDK, the programming model is exactly the same. You create a pipeline, and it's the first thing you're normally gonna do in a pipeline is read some input data file into what we call a P collection, and then you're gonna apply some kind of transformations or filters on that existing P collection that you just created in, the, in step A, and then you're gonna, by applying filters or transformations, that's gonna create a new, one or more new P collections. And you go through this iterative process and maybe you have to do some more transformations. Maybe you decide it's time to group some of the information in that collection. When you group it, you're gonna create another collection or another P collection. And then maybe you wanna group multiple P collections together and we can do that as well. And then that's also going to create a new P collection. So as you might have gathered, P collections are immutable. You create them, you transform them, but every time you transform them, it creates a new P collection. And then at the end of this, you're typically going to apply some function or aggregate function because you're trying to get some kind of report 
uh, it could be a count, it could be a sum, and then you're going to write your output data file. And at the end, once you've created these data file, created the uh, pipeline, performed all these operations on that pipeline, on the P collections, then you run the pipeline and you are done. So I'm going to show a batch scenario. Um, this is based on, you can see the link at the bottom of this slide, um, a website where I found what I thought was a pretty neat example. So it's a pretty simple batch example, but it kind of covers these things that I wanted to cover. Um, so I went ahead and used the, that code. I modified it a bit. I think the, in the form that it was written in, I believe it's running on App Engine. And I wanted to run this on my uh, on my Mac and as well as I wanted to run this um, and submit it from my Mac to, to Cloud Dataflow. So it's slight modifications to that uh, article and the code that's in, that referenced in that article. But the basic scenario is there's a log file of website visitors containing three fields in this file. The visitor's country, visit the duration, and the visitor's username. So underneath that you see kind of five sample records in that log file. So again, comma, comma separated, country, time, uh, visit duration, and username. And the need on the right side of the slide is the reporting need is for each country, you want to get the number of users visiting the website. And then the second reporting need is for each country, you want the average visit time. So let's take a quick look at how this is accomplished in um, the Beam SDK. And then we're going to run it locally and then run it on Cloud Dataflow. And when I run it on Cloud Dataflow, I am going to switch it. So we're going to be using a much larger input file and see how Dataflow reacts to that. So let's go and just look at some code. So the first thing I'm looking at here on the right side is, um, is the code for running this locally. And a couple things you're going to notice, my input and output files both reference local, um, a local current directory in this case. So also if I go down and look at the runner information, it is direct. So that's meaning that it's going to run locally on my local machine. And the next thing that I'll bring out is I'm actually using a specific text IO reader to write to read this local file for out, of, out of my file system I'm running on my Mac. So uh, let me just go through the pipeline and then again the pipeline doesn't change at all regardless if this is running locally or running uh, or running the pipeline on cloud data flow. But uh, what just changed, I'll show you kind of the changes as I, as I modify this to run on data flow in a second. But a quick review of the pipeline. So as I mentioned in the programming model, the first thing you need to do is create the pipeline. So we're creating a pipeline with the options I specified up above and the pipeline is called P. Now we're taking P as our pipeline and we're gonna read from text the input file. The input file is the one I referenced up above, reading that out of my local file system. And then we're going to do a par parallel do split. And basically in the split, we're going to go ahead and separate. Let me just go back up here. We're going to go ahead and separate the country, um, uh, the, the, yeah, the country duration and user, and return a dictionary representing the row. So we've done that. Um, now we've done that. And so now we have a new P collection called rows. So the next thing we're doing is we're reading that P collection called rows in this next step. And we're gonna collect, we're gonna actually take that P collection rows and we're gonna collect timings and collect users. So on the collect timings, we're basically grouping by key. So we're gonna group by the key, which is the country. And then we're gonna combine values and we're gonna get the, the average combined value. So to get the, the average time on the site. Then the next thing is we're taking that input, which was again the rows, which we created up here as our P collection. We're taking that same one and we're doing it, we're collecting users, then we're grouping by key. And again, the key in this case is the country. And we've collected the number of users who visited that site. And then we're gonna count the number of users. 
So basically at this point, we have two new collections, a timings collection, and we have a users collection. And then the final step is we're going to take the timings and users collection, and we're going to actually join those by key. Uh, so the key in this case is the country. And then we, at this point, we have the country, we have the number of users, and we have the average time. And then we're going to go ahead and write that out to our output file. So this is going to be running locally. And in this case, um, what did I specify? The input file is this input-377k. So if we go over here, and input 377k, it's roughly 377k or 386k in this case. And if I go ahead and run it, we're going to get a few warning messages, but this is going to run successfully. And then we're going to get our output file, we're going to rewrite this output file that we see right here. So I'll go ahead and run this. So we see our warnings, which I will clear up sometime in the future. And if we do ls, we have our new output file that just came in at this time. And if I just go do a head on the output, you're going to see that we have the country, we have, um, we have the number of users, and then we have the average time. Okay. So that ran locally on my lap on my laptop, which just happens to be a Mac. So let's take a look at the almost identical program that's going to run this on Cloud Dataflow. So first thing you know, this is my input file and output file. Instead of being local on my Mac, my local directory, I am going to be specifying the file names which um, we're going to be running. Uh, my input and output file name are going to be on Cloud Dataflow or in, in Google Cloud Storage. Then I have a few more options that I need to set. I need to set my GCP project. I need to set my job name. I need to set my temp staging location. And I need to set my, my temp location. And then I need to set my, my staging location. So I just append those to my options. Okay, so now I have all these appended to my options and we're going to actually do the, and then here is the runner where it was, this was direct in the previous program. This is now my specify my runner as data flow. And then if we look at this pipeline, so notice here, we are actually creating this pipeline with options equals options. So those are how I had all my specific information. So we have this called options here, and that had all my specific information for GCP. All right, then the rest of this is identical. Uh, we're doing the exact same things. Uh, getting the, the, um, we're getting the um, group by keys and then joining two collections together using the code group by key and then we're getting our output and running our output and the outputs go into the Google Cloud Storage to this file location in Google Cloud Storage. So now let me go ahead and run this and we're not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and let this run but I'll go ahead and kick this off. Okay, we get some we get some warnings, which again, it's warnings are fine. This is going to go ahead and run till completion. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like on the data flow side of things. So if I go, let me go into it here. So the one I just kicked off about fifteen seconds ago is this one up here at the top, which is. Um, that isn't running yet, still kind of in the kind of pre-processing mode of setting things up. And then we have the one that I previously created and succeeded, uh, successfully executed right before it. And I'll just bring this one up because it's exactly the same as the other one. And 
just going to notice a couple of things. So one, we have this graphical representation of my processing pipeline where we did the read from text, we did the split, and then we had the par par dues or the parallel dues. So notice those can happen in parallel. And as I mentioned before, because um, Google Cloud Dataflow is no ops and kind of scales automatically, this can be done across multiple machines. So if we look over here on the right side and we look at our kind of worker history, you can see that our worker history, we actually have a target and a current. And the target at the very beginning was, was we need one worker and then we got one worker. So then from this time all the way to the about just before 7-Eleven, now our target workers went up instead of needing one, Dataflow said, I now need two workers. And then soon after that, around 7-Eleven, our current workers went up to two. So now we're using two worker nodes or two VMs to process this information or process this pipeline. And then now we're getting to about almost 17, 7, 16, and three, maybe 45 seconds. And now we're saying now our current workers or our target workers is, is one but we can drop this down now to zero because presumably we're now done. And then our actual current workers goes down to zero as it finishes processing, the uh, complete, complete finishing is the pipeline processing. So this all took about 14 minutes and 50 seconds, but you can see how it automatically scaled up from one node, one processing or worker nodes to two, and then, then from two, we went back down to zero, and then an actual went back down to zero. Okay, so I'll probably do some other uh, videos to talk, uh, talk about other kind of maybe a little more advanced subjects, maybe a little bit of windowing, uh, maybe some debugging. But for now, I just wanted to cover the basics of a batch scenario using Cloud Dataflow and Apache Beam. Hope this was helpful and um, hope to see you again next time. Bye.